My name's Josh. It's a privilege to be here, and uh, I represent Trellis, which is a network. I know I'm not supposed to use that word because Taylor just made fun of it, but uh, it's a network of missionaries and microchurches and missional expressions that exist to see gospel saturation across all 34 counties of beautiful East Tennessee. Uh, and we use the imagery of Trellis to uh, we're trying to create something that can support a network of networks uh, to see multiple vines grow up and produce really, really good fruit. And I'll explain kind of what that looks like here in just a few minutes. Um, but first, I want to kind of tell you the backstory. Our family, about a decade ago, first got introduced to the concept of disciple-making movements. Uh, of course, that's a, a fashionable missional buzzword these days, DMM, uh, when we were missionaries in the great country of Haiti. And we served there for a while. We, we made a lot of mistakes along the way, but we ended up raising up a lot of indigenous missionary Haitian leaders to start and catalyze a disciple-making movement. That movement today has over a thousand house churches, so they call them simple churches, that blanket the map of Haiti. And we were like, man, this is incredible. Uh, we took some of the things we learned there. We went over to uh, West Africa, and we felt called to engage with unreached people groups. And so we're now working with four unreached people groups in two countries there. The first unreached people group has 13 generations of what you might call micro churches or simple churches or house churches amongst primarily Muslim background believers. We're, literally, we're seeing thousands of Muslims and animists coming to Jesus. It's incredible what's happening. And I was back stateside. Our family had moved back uh, to good old East Tennessee. And uh, I was at this vineyard conference. I come from a vineyard tribe. And this guy named Bubba Justice came up to me. He's from Alabama, which can help explain his name a little bit. No offense to the common three guys that are coming up next. Uh, and Bubba Justice said, hey, Josh, that's really, really great what's happening around the world. But you're in East Tennessee now. What's going on there, man? And so I wanted to hit him because I'm kind of prideful. But, but I was really convicted. You know, I was like, man, you know, we're seeing DMM all around the world. You guys are hearing about this stuff. You, a lot of you are reading the same stuff I am. What's happening in India and China and West Africa and all over. Um, and, you know, I, I prayed about it. We felt convicted. We made some little attempts at things here and there in East Tennessee, but primarily I just kept doing the work overseas and being sa satisfied with that. And then COVID comes around, right? And, 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 and we're all struggling. The North American church is trying to figure things out. We're reeling, many of us, and don't know what to do. And uh, I, I remember jogging in the park back like midsummer, a park right outside of Knoxville, Tennessee, close to where I'm from. And I was, I was in tears. I was just, I was, I was mad at, kind of at God, but really at the church. And I said, God, I'm just, I'm done with church. I can't do this North American church thing anymore. And I felt like God said in that moment, you're not done with church. You love the church. I'm going to show you some new ways that are rooted in ancient ways. And at the same time, I got this mental image. It was really crazy uh, of this game, which I think is going to come up behind me here. This is called Thin Ice. I don't know if you guys have ever played this game. I had not played this game in several years with my kids when I had this image in the park. And I was like, what in the world? Why is that coming up, Lord? And, and as I prayed into it, you, gotta, you see there on that game, you pull like a paper towel tied over a surface and you take those tongs and you pick up a wet marble and you drop them on the paper towel. And so little kids love Love it because you go in a circle and everybody takes turns doing it and the anticipation of that marble going through is really really exciting for little kids and I, I hadn't played it in a few years and so I said God why are you giving me that image and I felt like in that moment God was saying you're to be like one of those marbles and we've never seen a true disciple making movement in North America but that doesn't matter you're to be obedient to be dropped like a marble, and you might not be the one to see breakthrough, but it's coming, and when one marble goes through, all of them are going to flood through. And I, I think that's one of the many amazing things that God is doing in North America. I think we're going to see new, beautiful, incredible things. Everybody's all woeful right now because of COVID and the church is reeling, but I think it's one of the most wonderful gifts that God could have possibly given us. And I know that's kind of controversial because COVID's been brutal, but I think out of it, God's going to do an incredible thing. And so, you know, when we, as international missionaries, we ask crazy questions, stuff like, what's it going to take to reach an entire 
people group, unreached people group? That's an audacious kind of question. And, you know, we never really asked that kind of question in North America. At least I hadn't. I didn't know you were allowed to ask that kind of, that kind of questions. And so as I was praying through what God might want to see done, we started saying, you know, what's the wig take? What's the what's it going to take that God might want to give us? And we found out that the wig take for us was what's it going to take to reach East Tennessee? All the unchurched, the de-churched, and the I'm freaking done with churched, you know? Because there's a lot of them. Even in the Bible Belt where I'm from, it's not the Bible Belt anymore. There's a ton of churches, but there's nobody in them, you know? And so we started praying. We started engaging with some different people in our area, some friends of mine who also wanted to live like missionaries, some who already were. And we just started praying and praying and praying. And, and, and shortly thereafter, around January, about eight of us got together in Knoxville, Tennessee, and we, uh, we started just hearing from the Lord that we were to begin to go through a missionary pathway together, a kind of DMM training. We started to do that. We started to live as missionaries in the places where we eat, work, learn, and play. Uh, and uh, we started training some other missionaries at the, at the same time. A vision started to come together, and, and Trella started to form. And we believed that that startup hub in Knoxville was to be the first of three and so, as you can see on the map here in East Tennessee, there are th roughly 34 counties, about 2.4 million people. Again, that's a God-sized dream, uh, but we believed that we wanted to start a hub in Knoxville, raise up missionaries there, and then shortly thereafter, start two other hubs, one up where it says Bristol. This is uh, called the Tri-Cities area, so Bristol is one of three cities in the Northeast that we believe is very strategic, and we are currently forming a hub there, and then a third hub down in the greater Chattanooga area, which is currently being formed. So there is a hub that's coming together with lots of uh, additional missionaries and people that are starting to live as missionaries uh, that are under those hubs. Um, we have a vision to see at least one hub in each of the 34 counties in East Tennessee. And so where we're currently at, we've got, like I said, three kind of startup hubs, actually four because there's one county right outside of Knoxville that is starting a hub. These hubs will be filled with equipping teams. We, we kind of see ourselves as having a, a mission-sending organization in every county, except we're not raising up missionaries to go overseas, but we're empowering indigenous missionaries, indigenous to their counties, because they know their counties. They know the people there. They know the makeup. This map represents a few cities, but overall, most of the counties in East Tennessee are very rural. And so what does it look like to do these kinds of concepts in, in, in those areas? And so we have three, actually four startup hubs that we're working with right now. At the same time, we're developing peer coaching cohorts. And so we have people that are going through a startup level, which is pretty intense. They go through a missionary pathway. They get lots of training, lots of assessments, and then they move into ongoing peer coaching cohorts, which is one of the ways that they can stay connected to Trellis. Got a lot of other things to share, but I got two minutes. So let me just share a few stories about some of the people that are starting to live as missionaries in East Tennessee. There's a guy named Will Boggs, and he's developed a team that wants to combat both human trafficking, both in, the, in Tennessee and around the world, but also they're reaching out to ladies that are in lives of prostitution in East Knoxville, which is kind of a rough part of Knoxville. And so they've raised up a team to engage those ladies, and they have a vision to see those ladies as persons of peace back into the places where, let's be real, churches aren't going into, right? And so he's got an amazing ministry. They started a coffee shop to sustain what they're doing. Their ministry is called Raising a Voice, and they're living as missionaries going after after this stuff. We got another uh, lady named Jamie Delaney, and she lives right outside of Knoxville. Her and her husband are raising up missionaries to engage with the youth in Alcoa, which is a suburb outside of Knoxville. We've got another guy named Danny Castillo. Danny's a, a Mexican guy that's been in the States for about 15 years now. And uh, Danny's actually about to start helping us to train a lot of uh, uh, Hispanic, uh, Spanish-speaking individuals and take this to Hispanic communities all across East Tennessee. They're also translating a lot of the material that we're using into Spanish, and so we're excited about what Danny's using. Uh, me, myself, our, our family, we've started on our street. There's 14 houses on our street. We are planting the gospel in our area, and we are seeing a microchurch emerge right where we live. It's beautiful to see my kids involved with this. We have uh, also strategic partnerships with KC Underground, and those guys are really helping us out a lot, as you can probably tell from some of the language I'm using. Also, Forge America has played a huge role. A couple of those guys are over there. They're helping to coach us. 
Um, we thank you for the opportunity to partner with you, and, and we want to see, like I said, gospel saturation and kingdom come across beautiful East Tennessee. So thank you for your partnership. Thank you for your time.